Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Microsoft Project Made Easy. Today we're going to be looking at work breakdown structures, particularly within a construction business and how you can set them up, how they work, how you should think about them in MS Project. I've done other videos on my YouTube channel just on work breakdown structures in general from a project management perspective. Uh, in this video, I'm really sort of applying that to Microsoft uh, Project. So on your screen, you can see I've created a little bit of a work breakdown structure here. It's actually um, fairly in depth if we open it up, but this is kind of like at a high level. And really what you got to get used to is that you've got what Microsoft Project refers to as summary tasks, which are headings. And so underneath a, a heading like this would be your overall project. So say you had this multi-story building on 25 Bay Street, this would be like the top level heading that you would have. And then underneath it, you would have the following. Um, well, you can do whatever you want with it, like in a construction project, but very often you'll probably find headings that revolve something like this. Everything that's going to be before construction, uh, so pre-construction, um, early works. Uh, so these are things like preparing the site that you're actually doing some things on, but not direct the construction process. And then the construction phases or construction process. You know, you can, you can name it what you will uh, that way. But as long as um, it's incorporated that, what you try to do is you try to standardize it within your business or the types of projects you do. Uh, because you can even make a template out of this so that you have these uh, headings already predefined for you. And then really what you're trying to do is fill it in. Um, the next one is project closeout. So this would be all the things that you have to put together to close out the project. And then post-construction services. And these would be things like um, warranty, things that you're doing after the closeout. Maybe even you have service agreements or something else that you're, you're performing as part of the overall contract. Um, so that's sort of a very high level of the work breakdown structure. Uh, we can open this up and it actually organizes um, your project by levels. So in other words, um, you can go to where it says view, the view tab, a very useful tab that has a lot of things that you can do to manipulate and review the information pretty easily. Because you got to remember, this is like a database program. And so everything is sort of put into categories and can be accessed and manipulated in different ways to suit your purposes. And so where it says outline, this will allow you to outline different levels of detail on your project. And you'll get a sense here, like this is what level one, and then this is the next level, 1.1. So you have two numbers there. So that will be the second level that we have open. So if I go to outline view, you see how it says levels? And it has nine levels. Well, if I go level one, it's only going to show me the project, right? So that's the top level. If I go level two, it's going to show me the five categories that I have underneath there. If I go to level three, right, it's going to open those up because just so that everybody's clear, these little diamond shapes, I can open them up, right? Just like you do your file folders in Explorer. Um, you can open them up. So it's, it's housing all the headings and activities underneath that that would fit under pre-construction. And so if I go to level three, I can open up and I can see under pre-construction, I have design, estimating and scheduling. You know what? I could make design a heading. All I would have to do is um, grab a few uh, rows and right click, insert task. And then I just inserted three tasks under that. And I could highlight those three tasks. And then if I went to the task tab and I go to where it says indent, that little arrow there. So you got to make sure you're in the task tab and you go to that arrow that's facing to the right. And now I've just created another heading that I have these um, three tasks underneath. Now, if you recall, I uh, was at level three. So that's level three, but I just inserted a new level under that. So this would be level four. So that's how you see the numbering proceeding, 1.111, 1.112, and so forth. And then, of course, I could enter my task information. At the lowest level, at the lowest level, you have your tasks. And so 
at the lowest level, you should be able to assign a resource to those tasks. So that's, that's another significant thing with the work breakdown structure. It's creating categories for you on your project so you can fill in that information and it acts like a giant checklist so you don't miss things. So let's continue on with this. Well, what level was I at? Let's go back to the view tab and let's go and check uh, where we are. I think we were at level three, so nothing should change. That's right. And so at level three, you can see under construction phases, because let's face it, we've got a lot of stuff we've got to do under construction phases. I've broken this down into substructure, superstructure, uh, building envelope, building systems, interior finishes, exterior grade and landscaping, right? Hardscape and softscaping, shall we say. All right, so I've got all of those headings. The other ones, it doesn't look like I've created any other ones except for this one that I just created and designed. So remember, you it's your project. You can create more headings underneath those various uh, upper level headings that you can use to serve yourself in whatever means you want. So there's a lot of latitude. But you know what? I would have certain standard headings and the, these are pretty good headings that you could have for your overall project here you'll find most construction businesses they have something similar to that and then they usually stick with it uh, so that then it's across the organization it's recognizable oh this, it's like the master format for specifications you know we look at this division and we know this is what's underneath it and then we feel comfortable and confident with us well businesses can do that and it also depends on the type of work how you want to create these categories uh, and when we get further into it then we can uh, track codes cost codes and that's a different uh, numbering system than our work breakdown structure to help track our budgeting so that's another level but the work breakdown structure helps us in many ways to ensure that we can track costs we can break things into categories we can uh, ensure that we're not missing a particular area of work because we know we've got these headings that we've structured in our project and that we have to figure out well what do we have to do under each one of those and so it gives you the flexibility too to create what you need for your specific project if there's something really unique about it so let's take a look at the next level what was the next level four I think so let's these should all open up now if I go to number four and so you see now they opened up under construction phases I've got substructure I've got superstructure and building envelope building systems and I really haven't filled all this in I could do the same thing with all the stuff I got to do on the first floor regarding the superstructure you know the forming uh, the rebar all of all of those aspects I could have that listed for each floor if my building was 20 floors I could have that 20 floors listed there um, so I could structure it whatever way I want um, to have that information housed in those categories. But look, under substructure, I've, I have gone a little bit deeper. So I have created those extra headings so you get an idea. So I've got two underground parking. I've got a slab on grade, maybe a, a one section of the building. I've got foundation walls, um, the footings, excavation. So I've got headings again. And I'm on level four, one, two, three, four. So I know I'm on level four. Well, let's open that up because these have things underneath them as well. So that would be level five. A lot of projects only go down to level five, but this one I made a little bit more intricate. So we've got excavation, footings, foundation walls. Now in this one I made slab on grade, but because it's a big slab on grade, and we're going to tackle it in two sections. It made sense to break that slab on grade into slab on grade east side and slab on grade west side. So in that case, I've got one more row, one more level and underneath that slab on grade east side, slab on grade west side. And then at the lowest level, I'm at the task or activity level, right? And so uh, if I actually go to my task tab, I go scroll to task. I can see these activities listed here. So I can see these activities listed here. I've got everything linked. And that's another thing I want to mention. Don't link to summary tasks. Summary tasks are your work breakdown structure. They're headings. They're not something that you want to link stuff to. Um, so it, it categorizes all of your work. It organizes it. It helps you. Now, I'm, if I was on slab on grade west side, I'm going through the drawings. I'm talking to the mechanical sub, the electrical sub. 
I'm gathering this information, I'm putting it together, I'm vetting the timeframes, that may be part of my procurements and the contracts, trying to um, really come up with a reasonable plan. It's gonna change later, we talk about that in other videos, but we're coming up with a reasonable plan and organizing ourselves for this. And the nice thing is, we've done all of this work, I can easily roll this stuff up, right? So I could just, you know, I could go back to view, I can go, you know, I don't want to see everything. Maybe I just want to see level two. And if I roll up, now I'm back to level two. If I just want, if I'm just in the pre-construction stage, maybe I just look at pre-construction. I don't have to have the rest of it open at this, at this stage. If I'm just at the closeout stage, maybe I'm just going to be focusing in on here, right? So we can open up what we need to look at and detail um, in that way. The other thing that I, I've been getting asked uh, on some of the questions that uh, and comments, thank you for the questions and comments, is um, can you, you know, somebody works in Primavera P6 and it's all nice and colorful and it, the different levels look kind of cool. Well, if you want, you can, you can colorize uh, this. I'm a little bit colorblind, so that's not my big thing, but I've been asked a few questions. It does look a little bit nicer. Uh, so if I, if I mess up a color or something saying it, you'll know why. Uh, but um, let's say, uh, for example, I click on row one, and so I've got it in those two categories. Again, it's just filling in. What do you want to fill? Uh, for color wise. So maybe I want to go with a um, light blue. See if I hover over it, it'll tell me what color it is. So then I'm good. Um, so I've got a light blue. And then maybe these, uh, this level, the basically the second level, maybe I want to make them all a certain color. So maybe I want to make, oh, maybe I'll go with the yellow. So I'll make them yellow. All right. So they're all yellow. And so then maybe I want to go to my outline step and go to level three. And then maybe at level three, I want to make um, whatever is at level three um, a different color, right? So the headings, not, not the activities. I'll leave the activities alone, but I could do, certainly do that. I could hold the control key down and just highlight all the ones that I want. So kind of like Excel, if you're used to Excel, if you hold the control key, you can select different rows. So that's what I did. I held down the control key, I'm going to right click. I got to pick another color. Maybe is orange there? I think so. All right, I'll pick orange. And did that do it? Yes. All right, and so now maybe I'll go to um, level four. Uh, and so on level four, I've got all of these headings here. And so maybe I'll highlight those. I've got to come up with another color here. I think that's the only ones that are level four. If there were more, I could do, I could uh, hold the control key, but I think they're all in that one spot. Uh, so I'll go to, I think, what do I got? Green? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Green. There we go. And almost those orange and greens look almost the same to me. I hate to say it. Um, okay. And so now maybe I'll go to level five. And I think I had those slab on the grades. So, and I think that's the last one. So I got to come up with a, another cover for those. And maybe I'll come up with, let's see. Uh, Gray, maybe. Yeah, gray. Okay, so I've got all these different colors now. So you wanted different colors. Well, that's how you can easily do it, structure it. Once you've got your work to break down structure in place. If you add another one, just look at what level it is and copy the color to it. So if you add more levels for some reason, because that happens uh, all the time, like I might want to put it some, uh, make estimating. Well, I just make sure I do it that uh, orange. Um, so and so on and so forth. Um, so that gives me a nice work breakdown structure. I can go by different levels, like level two. I can go to level three, and you see how it's flowing out the information. Um, there is another shortcut, and some of you may, may give me a comment on that. You can go to format and textiles. I've talked about this in other videos, uh, and you can, like this is kind of handy, item to change all, right? So if if uh, you wanted to sort of the text to be a bold or you wanted it to be a different color, you can do that. Or you wanted to change the summary task all to a different color, you could do that. Like you could select the background color that you want. 
uh, and that would change all of the summary tasks. The problem is it doesn't change them on different levels. So it's more limited. This is more customizable. And because I had some of those questions about P6, um, it's, it gives a little bit more of that, that flavor that way. Um, so that's another way of doing it. But like as, an as a quick example, a little off topic, you could say, I want the critical tasks and I want them to be, um, I want the critical tasks to be read the text if i wanted the text read um, and i click ok you see how they turned red this 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 well these are critical activities right so if i go scroll to task um, you'll see that these ones are showing up red over here the ones that aren't red they're blue they're not critical that one's an open end oh, so not an open end it's just not open that's that's the other thing when you're reviewing for open ends and i talk about that in other videos make sure everything is open because it'll show like it's open like it's not connected to anything but if i go to view and i go to outline um the ones that might not be are scheduling because i played around with that if i go all subtasks then you see now it shows the connections so when you got something closed it doesn't show you the connection keep that in mind about the work breakdown structure because you might be like where did it go what happened you got to have everything open but very easy to open everything right under the view go to all subtasks and then it shows you everything underneath or at least it should uh, microsoft project sometimes can be quirky but um, that's basically what it should do of course i've got question marks here because of these activities i added and i didn't put durations so that's why it's saying, hey, what did you do? Did you want this? Um, I think if I put like two days here and three days there and four days there, it gets rid of that, right? Because everything else has a duration. Uh, lastly, just with, uh, you create this elaborate work breakdown structure and sometimes it kind of gets in your way sometimes. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit um, discerning um, that way. So sometimes it can bother you a little bit um, with that. Um, so if that's the case, what you can do is you can um, just turn it on and turn it off. So you can go to where it says um, where it says format and see where it says on the far right here on the top summary tasks. If I click this, all your summary tasks disappear, right? If I put it back, they all come back. Did you notice that before that it kind of lost the color there? something to do with the video card and the regeneration. So you notice that when I clicked it on and clicked it off, it came back. So some of these little things too, it's got to do with um, some minor things uh, with Microsoft Project and the video card that you're using, etc. But usually if you enter something new or you, you it's almost like you um, uh, rework it and uh, ask it to cycle through again, then it, it comes back. So don't panic about that either. The nice thing when you shut off a summary task, you know, if you've got activities that are all over the place, you know, with links from different headings to different headings, which is normal, but you really wanted to just sort your stuff by, by duration, you could still sort it by duration. So you could click sort earliest to latest and it would sort your activities for that time period um, from that. And then if um, you didn't want it to do that anymore, you could also, if I went, for, I don't think it's going to change too much here, but let's see. Yeah, I didn't think it would. Um, sort of, but sometimes it'll change a lot. Uh, if it was a real project, it definitely would have. Um, and it would have categorized everything. So it would change some of your, some of your um, numbering on your project, right? Like it did change some, like, I, I, well, no, actually it didn't because that's a heading. But it would change some of your numbering. Uh, that way. Now, if you ever do that and then you, you want to resort it, just remember you've got to go back to um, the view and just go to sort and you say sort by ID. That's the ID number over here. And that will um, resort that. Once that's resorted, then you can just go to format, bring back my summary tasks. I want them back. There they all are back. And you can, of course, as we said, roll up your uh, summary tasks, go to outline view, what level do you want it to? Let's go with this to start. One last thing I would say is if you've done all that and you're happy with it, like you've got your headings in place, you didn't really have to put all the activities in, you know, but you might have all the headings in place and just have a few like blank tasks under them to, to hold it as a starting point. 
you can save this file and just use this file as a starting point um, or you can save it as an actual template so to save it as a template i've done other videos on this on my playlist as well but you can just go file save as um, ms project made easy and save as type you just say template and if you save it as a template then what it's going to ask you well, i've already uh, i've already made it named that because i use it uh, so i'm going to say yes replace it and the name you typed is already given okay um, maybe i'll give i'll just change the the name seen it once that doesn't want to overwrite it so i'll just go b uh, I got it as template. There we go. Now it brings up the save as template um, listing. And this, you can actually save other values. I don't want to get into that right now. But for this, we don't have any other fancy values. Like if you did a project and you had actually run the project and you wanted to save that as a template, there's certain things you can save within that that will allow you to keep that in the document, but then you can open and use that as a starting template for future projects or there might be some things you don't want in that project like actual values etc and you can have that removed from the template so it wouldn't save those so i click save now i've got this as a template file and so i can open this and then i can once i open it then i just save it as a project file an mpp file and then i can do my new projects i've got already my work breakdown structure in place so I hope that helps you a little bit with um, work breakdown structures. Uh, if you're uh, wondering what they are, all the headings were you could, and you wanted to create your own, you could just take a look at that uh, and um, freeze it on your screen or take a look at some of the different levels with that. You know, So I'll just um, quickly run through it because you could always uh, freeze uh, the different screens. There's level two, there's level three, there's level four and five right all the way down through project closeout and post construction services okay so if you enjoyed this video please subscribe to my youtube channel uh, don't forget to click notifications so you're aware of new ones uh, this channel is all about construction and continuous improvement and learning as i'm a professor of construction management and i do a lot of consulting with uh, construction businesses for uh, a number of decades and luckily I've learned a lot from them so I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time Tom Stevenson signing off for now bye bye